So the next question I have is from Ria. So Ria, are you there on the call? Ria, are you there on the call? Uh, yes, I'm there. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I had a question around, um, would like to get your thoughts. How do you see uh, the role of product marketing? What are the overlaps between product marketing and product management from your experience? Cool. And um, yeah, and then a follow up across a PLC, when does product marketing and its scope for user research become non-negotiable for the business? I think product marketing and product manager, uh, I have really done a bad job at it because to me, it's always been a mix. And I think I can talk about the same problem I've seen with product manager or engineering managers or product managers and technical product managers, deep technical project managers. I think all these roles overlap, right? And as product manager, you're kind of, doing two things you're doing a coordinating role plus you're bringing some part of your expertise there right and i think to me the best ways this has happened is having a very clear re a relationship and a great working relationship with these partners and especially with product marketing managers because uh, uh, and again there are no single kind of product managers you'll have product managers who are more technical product managers who've worked with more business side of things with product managers who've kind of worked on platforms and same thing with marketing managers you'll have marketing product marketing managers who work more on channels some people who work more on market opportunity some people who work more on market sizing or some people who worked on value proposition so i think it's just a partnership to figure out what are the areas which you think you can add a lot of value which are the areas where you think your partner can add a lot of value and split it that way. Uh, most of the dysfunctional relationships I've seen are because, uh, uh, because the split has not been based on the complementary skills each other brings, but based on organizational guidelines of what one is supposed to do and what one is not supposed to do. That's very insightful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very capture. Thanks, Roy. Yeah. And I think on the second question, when does product marketing and user research become non-negotiable for business success? I think the pragmatic answer is that uh, it depends upon the company and the funding you have, right? And it's non-negotiable for business success when you feel that you don't even have the skills to do a basic job for that. If you feel you have some sort of inputs and skills to do a basic job, uh, you still might be able to manage for it for some time. But if you say that, hey, I can't do it, I don't know how to do it, right? Then it's not negotiable for business success. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the last question I have from is Anika. Anika, are you there on the call? Hi. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try and explain this in the best way possible because it can get quite complex and you kind of need a lot of context. But so, so far, all of the products that I've worked on, it's been driven by the business and, and, and the aim is to sort of reduce costs in some sort of way. Now, the feature that we're developing obviously helps um, the company achieve that goal of reducing costs, but it makes another feature obsolete. So this feature is a, a feature from quantitative qualitative research has been requested highly mm. from our from our customers. Mm. However, when we look at our quantitative data, the mm. usage is very, very low, so less than one percent. Mm. But we have a small um, sort of like cohort of patients that this feature is extremely important to, um, and they use the service more frequently than the majority of users. How would you sort of like prioritize when, I know with product, we're always saying where the user, the customer is the most important, but mm. I've been faced with building products um, where the goal is sort of like business driven, but we still need to consider um, our customers. 
with patients because mm. I work in healthcare. Anika, so that's a great question. And I think, uh, uh, I feel that as product managers, we kind of face this trade off on a regular basis, right? Where you're about to launch a feature and you realize that there are certain segments for it, which it does not work. And I've been there, I'm sure a lot of people have been there, right? There's like 1% of segment for which the new feature is not working. And I think the decision then there is whether you go ahead or don't go ahead. My most, my advice would be to go back to principles and see as a company, what sort of company and principles do you want to have, right? And different companies have different principles. For example, a company like, Apple or say even WhatsApp and Facebook will hold back a feature if it does not work for all of the people versus there might be companies who are okay to launch a feature who do not work for say 20% of the people because they feel that the rest of them generate revenue. So I yeah. think it goes back to what the company's principles are and there is going to be no data that is going to tell you that the for the people, the stress cases you have, the 1% of people for whom this feature is really, really valuable, what will happen? You will never have enough data to make the decision. Yeah. I think uh, yeah, clearly if I were in your shoes, I'd raise the decision up to leadership saying that, hey, this is the trade-off. We can meet the goal, but it means that we don't serve these users. So the trade-offs in front of us is either we make it a very clear communication to the users that we won't be serving them, right? Or we decide not to launch this feature or build some other feature to solve that problem. And then seek, seek feedback about what kind of principles does the company want to have. Perfect, thank you so much. Yeah, if at that point the principle is around no, cost is important. I think then as a product manager, you should take the stand of saying that then you should be very upfront with those customers who are getting affected that this will not work for them. Okay. Mm. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. I have a question on Pranav. Pranav. Pranav, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my question is that does it uh, really uh, necessary to have technical background to become a product manager in big orgs like FB, Google, or Apple, let's say, mm. or only functional expertise can be good, uh, can, can be good enough to consider to be a product manager once uh, for the for the very first time? If yeah. I say about my career, I have around eleven years of experience in supply chain management domain for organizations like telecom and uh, e-commerce retail. So if I uh, want to become a product manager, does it ne really necessary like uh, the most important pillar is to have a technical background or non-technical background with good expertise in this industries can be uh, usable? Okay. I think mm, 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 mm. like one of the very bad analogies I've heard in my past is uh, uh, as a product manager, you're building tech products and not a uh, painting a house or printing posters. And I think as an analogy, the way I look at it is that, uh, that what everybody wants is product managers need to work with tech, right? And there's going to be a spectrum of product managers, somebody who's working more on the marketing side, say customer acquisition, to somebody who's working on say, hardcore deep platform layer things, like for example, building new AI systems, right? The common thing of all of this is all of them will need to work with tech in some form of the other. What most companies do is look for people who have the ability to work with tech teams. Sometimes it comes from working as a software engineer. Sometimes it comes from working with technology teams or having a technical background. Sometimes it comes because you've been involved in, an, in a function in your organization but the way the organization team has evolved, you've been always working with tech. I think that's the most important thing that needs to come out, that you're able to work with developers and engineers okay. rather than a technical background. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah.